G'day everybody and welcome to another episode of Words from the Scribe. Now my guest today is actually somebody who I would say has been arguably my best student of the uh, um, half day blogging workshops that I run, the stories that, st that sell workshop. And her name is Nicola Davies Cook. Now, let me just uh, give you a bit of a background here. Nico came in uh, and she was really worried about the fact that she didn't think she had anything to write. Um, and in the space of just a few hours, uh, I took her through the steps that I always use when I'm writing my own articles. And she followed those, those steps faithfully and she wrote the most amazing story, just talking about her background. And uh, I guess ever since then, I'd always thought that I would love to have her as a guest on the show. Uh, and so today it finally comes true. So uh, say good day to the audience at home, Nico, even though you can't hear them from where you are. <laughs> well, Ben, what a lovely introduction. Thank you very much. And, and, and hello, everybody. Nice to be here. And if you, um, if you listen really hard, Nico, you'll hear the sound of uh, thousands of people applauding from the, behind their laptops at home and their computer screens and their phone screens, giving you a warm welcome. <laughs> All right. That's great. Now, for those who are wondering who the hell is Nico Davies Cook, maybe you mm. can tell us that and uh, tell us what service you provide for people, Nico. Well, I am a life coach and I have been living here on the central coast for about three years. Mm -hmm. I, uh, I've sort of really sort of fallen into this passion for life coaching and helping people connect to really sort of resourceful parts of themselves. Uh, I think it's probably because of, of, of where I've traveled from in the past too. I mean, you may hear from my accent that uh, I'm originally from the UK. I know some people find it hard to believe, but uh, <laughs> I've, been, I've been living here in Australia for about 30 years or thereabouts. And I moved from London, a little bit of a bustling sort of metropolis in England, uh, to a farm in central western New South Wales. And all my mates back in, in the UK said, Nico, you are nuts totally nuts but I thought that you know what an adventure this is going to be and 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 it was because I, I discovered so many things about myself that, that I never knew when I was surrounded by people the whole time and um, I didn't like what I found all, all of the time I'd have to say um, I think that I wasn't necessarily a very nice person to be with um, on occasions, on, on, on other occasions though, I know I was, you know, the really loving wife and, and mother and so on and so forth. So raised three children. Uh, we eventually sold that farm at Turuina and moved to Orange. And, um, and after a, hmm, 22, 23 years of marriage or so, my um, husband and I separated and, and divorced. So that was a, a, a big sort of, journey for me emotionally from the whole sort of arriving in Australia and learning this new way of living and learning how to become a mum and, and learning a lo load of other things along the way too and then suddenly finding myself oh my gosh I'm on my own now so what do I do and, and, and that was a huge challenge but I think that it's when we're given these challenges when we we sort of embrace them in a way rather than sort of come at them kicking and screaming I, th I think I sort of did come at it a little bit kicking and screaming saying oh, I don't want to do this but on the other hand once I really sort of got stuck into it and gave myself you know enough rain to say yeah I can I can manage this I can I can cope with all this change that's going on in my life that made a huge difference to me and, uh, you know, I've, I've sort of been engaged with loads of uh, personal development things through books or through seminars I've attended uh, over the years. Um, and I think that when I, when I finally sort of managed to sell up the property in Orange and move to the Central Coast, I said, right, this is a total clean slate. I'm going to reinvent myself for the last final, well, I don't know that it's going to be the last final time, but uh, you know this is going to be me going forwards I want to be able to pay this forwards to everybody else and I went and got myself some life coach training because I don't know about you Ben but I mean you probably find this the whole time with your copywriting um, 
coaching that you do that people would always sort of ask me for advice on how do I do this or how do I do that? And I never knew whether or not I was being helpful. Mm. And now, of course, that I've done my life, life coaching training and I realized that actually it's not about giving people advice. It's about helping them connect to what they know deep down inside that makes all the difference. Does that make sense? No, no, it does. It does. I mean, you can, I agree. You can give people a certain amount of advice, but you, you can't sort of, you can't encourage what I'd call a dependent relationship. Now, uh, what I, what I, what's interesting about what you just said is I, I sat down uh, just the other day uh, with uh, Alan Stevens, who, you know, um, yes. and he's, he made this comment that uh, a, a good leader makes themselves redundant in the end. A good leader is somebody who can step aside and the machine will go on without them. Or worse yeah. to that effect. But yeah, it's, it's, it's yeah. the same thing. Like you have to, it's one thing just to say, oh, you should do this and this and this. It's one, it's one thing to tell a person what to think, but it's another, it's another thing to tell, uh, to show somebody how to think. Because if, think. you know, if, if, you, if you only tell somebody what to think, then, uh, then you're just going to keep them dependent. Um, and some people will exploit that for all the wrong reasons. But if you can show yeah. somebody how to think, um, it's quite different. So I, I remember I heard a, I heard a saying once and it was, um, it said indoctrination's goal is to, is to build consensus, but education's goal is to develop leaders. Um, mm. So yeah, it, you, you want to help, but you have to be careful how you help the other person. Don't you? Yes, yeah. definitely. Because, and I think that the, 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 the whole point of that thing of developing leadership is that we empower people to lead themselves. Mm -hmm. Uh, so that they're not, you know, sort of faithfully following other people, but actually using their own conscious decisions to plan, chart their path forwards. I think that's that's a very significant thing to, to remember. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, I mean, you've actually kind of answered the, uh, the next question, which was going to be, oh. excuse me, which was going to be, what's your background, but you've done a great job of filling us in there, Nico. But <laughs> just for the, uh, just for the people at home and, that they're listening to you and there's a few light bulbs going off. I think, yeah, I should speak to Nico. Um, and as always, we'll include your details with this clip as well. So people can reach straight out and get in contact with you. But uh, yeah. what areas do you service Nico? Are you, do you serve people Australia wide or you only work with people on the central coast? Uh, what's your setup? Well, uh, face to face, I, I, I basically meet people um, here on the central coast or down in Sydney, okay. but I do have clients worldwide. In fact, I've got a, a couple of clients over in the UK. Um, I mean, no, no surprises there. Mm. <laughs> um, so yes, Australia wide, worldwide, wherever. Um, so I've got a, um, here on the central coast, I um, have a meetup group that I, mm -hmm used to make connections with people um in fact actually I'm, I'm developing another one as well which is going to be ma mainly about leadership but my my current group is uh, women embracing change mm -hmm. so you know helping other women who have created or who are experiencing changing situations in their lives whatever it might look like to them um and just getting together and a bunch of us you know, we support each other. It's, it's just wonderful. And from there, you know, we sort of get into a one-on-one -on -one situation if, as required. Mm. Okay. Fantastic. That group, uh, is Julie involved with that group as well? Julie Watson? Yes. She's been a speaker of mine. Yes. Oh, fantastic. Yes. I, yeah, get, I get, yeah, I get some interesting speakers to come along to the meetups. Um, and, and so we're doing them clearly, we're doing them online now. Mm. Um, uh, I was the, the speaker at my last one. Um, um, who did we have the one before? Uh, Margie McComsky, I think you know her. Yeah, I know Margie, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so but Julie, no, it's, yeah. It, yeah, Margie's very bubbly. Uh, but no, Julie, I've, I've had Julie as a guest on this show previously. Uh, last year I spoke with her and she's got a great story as well, as, as you'd well know, but uh, yes. yeah, very entertaining. Um, yes, yes. Well, I did, I did Julie's... Um, and I think you were involved in that project too, the uh, Stronger Than My Excuses yes. show. Yeah, that's yes. right. I, I appeared so, on an episode, yeah. Yeah. I love the collaborative uh, approach that, you know, so many of us have here on the Central Coast because I think that that's a really great way to um, meet different people, broaden our, our, our audience, as it were. 
Mm. It, I don't know what I found. I mean, I was actually a Sydney sider at birth. I didn't move up here till up here to the coast till I was seven years old, and I've moved around a bit in those years since. But um, I don't know if you've uh, being being an expat from the UK. I don't know if you've noticed this, but um, I made a comment to an old friend of mine many years ago. You know, I came from North Queensland, and I'd made the observation that it seems that you know wherever you go in Australia you'll find somebody who's from North Queensland. And I've also found that with people from the central coast. And I said to this friend of mine, I said, I said, coasties are like Jews. Like they're not the biggest in number, but you seem to find them everywhere. Like it doesn't matter where you go in the world, you'll find people from the central coast, you know? Like, <laughs> I tell you what I have found though, on the central yeah. coast, people are very, very particular about where they will go. So yeah. maybe because I've I've spent an awful lot of time in uh, the Central West, where you know to go to the movies, for example, from the from the farm, we had a drive of 110 kilometres to go to the cinema. Yeah. Uh, so we didn't do it very often. I could have, <laughs> I could tell you, but so for me to hop in my car and drive 35 kilometres down to Woi Woi for um, a meeting or whatever is is nothing. No. Or or likewise to to. To, to drive up to Newcastle, I'll I'll do that. But I find that a lot of people here on the Central Coast seem to just like their little pocket of where they are. They want to stay on the peninsula, or they want to stay up in the northern Central Coast. Yeah, yeah, I've noticed that. Yeah. Yeah. I've noticed that sort of Terrigal's the go-to spot for people in the southern Central Coast if they want to go to the beach, that sort of stuff, and and everything, mm. all the amenities that provides. But then if you're from the when it was when it when there was the Gosford City Council Wyong Shire, people from the Wyong Shire area will instead go to the entrance. It's interesting yes. how like the entrance is for the people up north, and then the Terrigal's for the people down south. It's yes, um, yeah. It's funny like yeah, that. So I've, I discovered that with my meetups, trying to find appropriate venues. Yeah, yeah, it's interesting <laughs> like that. I'm just curious yeah. while while I think of it, just just I'm going to do an experiment here. Just say something is good for a moment. Something that's good. Good. No, that's all right. right. That's now. all right. I just, I just wanted to hear how you pronounced it because my, um, my brother-in-law is actually from the, he's from Bath actually. And he says everything is good. It's good. Yeah. It's real good. And I've noticed a lot of English people do that. So I was just curious yeah. if you still pronounce it like that. Hi Isaac, if you're watching, but <laughs> no, nah. nah, you, 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 you pronounce it more like you pronounce it more Australian. You say stuff is good more than mm, it's good. You know, like that. Yeah. Well, I know that, I mean, there's a lot of sort of regional accents around in England. And I think yeah. I'd, I've always had more what I would have called, um, well, back in the day, you know, I haven't lived there for 30 years, remember. Um, but back in the day, I would have said that I, I spoke BBC English. Ah, yeah, BBC um, but, English. but now when I go and, and turn on the telly over in the UK, there's all sorts of regional accents there. So it doesn't make any difference. <laughs> that's right. That's right. And then if you go further north into Scotland, I mean, I, I met a girl once who was from, um, from Glasgow and I was like, oh, that surprises me. And she's like, oh, why is that? And I said, well, I can understand what you're saying for beginners. Like, <laughs> yeah, it's very broad accents. <laughs> yeah. But um, uh, look, We're if, digressing, if, I feel sure. <laughs> no, no, all, all's good. All's good. But uh -oh. um, if there's... If, if, I if, for, no, I lost you. Oh, no, no. It, it comes in dreams and drabs, but we've been fine today so far. Fingers crossed. Fingers crossed. Good. But um, look, if there's, if there's one standout lesson uh, that you've learned along the way on your journey, uh, you know, on a personal and a professional level, what would you say it is? I think for me, the, the, the outstanding lesson that I've learned is that that, that old hoary thing of if you think you can't do something, you've got to do it. Mm. Because I know that there have been many times in my career um, when I've, I've, I've really sort of balked at taking another step, but it has just blown me away that when I have done it, when I've actually sort of stepped up and you know, faced my fear and, 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 and stepped over that line and said, can I swear? I Go for know. it. Oh, fuck it. I'm going to do it. Um, then that, I mean, it may not have been perfect. It may not have been uh, a resounding success, but that whole sort of, God, I've got to do this, yeah. you know, sort of really pushing myself through something uh, has, has been for me, 
the biggest game changer. Yeah. No, oh, awesome. I mean, I think that what's that expression that uh, there's nothing to fear except fear itself. And it really is just a, yes. No, it's really just, just an, an emotion and a series of what you usually call irrational beliefs. And if you can get past that, then yeah, you, you realize that so much opens up. The world just sort of opens up to you and you go, oh, like, I don't really know why, why do I let that, what, that certain thing. Why did I make on. such a, yeah. a meal of that? Yeah. 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 It's, it's funny. That's like, right. Um, so, so even in instances when I've had um, loads of people saying to me, don't do it, just don't do it. Um, I, and and I've, I've been committed and I've pushed through. Uh, I mean, a classic example was um, uh, several years ago. I mean, I organized a, um, a swimathon as a mm. fundraiser for Rainbow Club in Orange. And I, I kept saying, this is going to be such a wonderful opportunity for us to raise the profile of this little club. And everybody was saying, oh, no, 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 there's way too much work involved in that. Let's not, let's forget it. And I said, well, I'll tell you what, I'll do it all for you. And so I did, I did all the promotions, I did all the arrangements and I went and, you know, learnt this fundraiser program on the internet and set it all up and, and so on and so forth. And when the day came and everybody that I'd roped in, you know, sort of almost flogging them to the, to the seat saying, you've got to sit there for an hour and just count people's laps, you know, that's yeah. all you've got to do. Um, at the end of the day, they said, wow, you know, nice. uh, we did it. I said, of course we did. <laughs> Awesome. It's good when you have that kind of self-belief and it all comes together. <laughs> That's right. But um, I mean, I guess for a lot of people, and especially at, at this moment in time, there'd be quite a few people out there, I'd fathom, who are considering um, going and starting their own venture, starting a business. And there can be certain fears holding them back from that. But I mean, in your experience, what would you say is the most important piece of advice uh, that you'd offer those people? Like if someone out there is starting a business or considering starting a business, even uh, what, what should they be keeping in mind? Do you reckon Nico? Well, um, I, I tell you what, my own, my own experience of starting a business has been sort of quite haphazard, I think. I just had a passion and said, I'm going to do this. And I've been learning along the way. I think the best thing to do is to find someone who is ahead of the game. Hmm. Find somebody who's already got the scores on the board that you want. Yeah. And go and ask them, how did you get there? What did you do? So talk to them and do what they say. That's it. That's it. Yeah. I just, you, as, as you said that, I just thought it was interesting. Um, there's a, I can't remember the name of it right now. It would come to me. Oh, it was called the last dance and it's a documentary that's just come out on Netflix uh, about the last title winning season of the Chicago bulls and Michael Jordan's time there. But just as you were talking about that, I thought of, um, there was a game, oh, this would be over 20 years ago now, and I talked about this in an old, old video of mine somewhere, but there was a game where a young, a young Kobe Bryant was out on the court, and you can see in, in, the, in the game footage, and he goes right up to uh, Michael Jordan when he's about to take free throws, and he's just asking, what are you doing here? How are you doing this? And he didn't, he didn't see anything unusual about that. He was a rookie and just started playing, but he went up and asked the number one player in the game, what are you doing here? How are you doing this? And just straight away was... was just um, getting advice out of him. And he didn't think that was a big deal. Um, and I think that really strikes yeah. what you're saying that if you're going into business and you want to, you want to head off in a certain direction and succeed, ask people who've already been in that direction uh, and reach those milestones and see if you can't make the job easier for yourself. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Because, but otherwise all you're going to do is chip, chip, chip away at trying to do it yourself. And you, you know, if you can save yourself making the same mistakes that somebody else has made already, then yeah, why not save yourself that little bit of time? Oh yeah, that's it. That, um, absolutely. There's no, there's no such thing as a self-made man or man or woman. Anybody who reaches that success has done so uh, with, with the contributions of plenty of other people out there, plenty of other people that's they've right. met and, and interacted with. So yeah, use it to your advantage. I absolutely yeah, agree. Yeah. And, and, and you mentioning there, people that you've met, I think that's really important because uh, I, I've 
said all along and, and I, I think probably my even my parents said it's not what you know it's who you know yeah yeah that's yeah. going to make the difference in your life that's yeah. right and it's funny i remember as a kid or sort of growing up you'd hear that expression but people always said it in a kind of bitter way like oh it doesn't really matter how good you are at something just if you kiss the right asses and shake the right hands but i think that people are, i think there's been a tendency for people to look at it like mm -hmm. it's it's a reason to complain rather than a reason to be inspired like you instead of complaining oh these people just know the right people why not introduce yourself to the right people yourself and build those connections like yeah. it can work in your favor absolutely like i've i've had so many uh opportunities in business in my personal life even where it really just all came down to having the right connections and i you know it yes. made my job so much easier so why yes. not use it to your advantage instead of complaining about other people who've had it work for them it can work for you too yeah. Yeah, that's true. I think I think there's also there is a degree of I, just harking back to your comment there about it doesn't matter how good you are. I think it does. I think that personal skills, personal, um, you know, sort of even connecting skills, let alone the service you're providing, mm. that skill does matter because if you don't have that, then you're 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 going to be undermined really really quickly, no matter who you know. You know, yeah. it's going to be glaring the obvious that you're not up to scratch. Yeah, sure. Yeah. No, you're right. Actually, I should, uh, I should paraphrase that. You want to, <laughs> you want to, you want to make sure that you're working on being the complete package, but there's no point um, being exceptional at what you do, but not having the people skills or the connections. It's all, it's all yes. got to be part of the whole picture, I think. Yes. Yeah. But, um, yeah. Look, considering your own experience, um, uh, why should people get in touch with you? Why should people give you a call, Nico? Well, I think... <laughs> You know, especially in times like now, um, there's a lot of uncertainty around us as to, uh, you know, how long we're going to be in lockdown, how uh, how this is going to change our lives going forwards. And I know, I mean, crikey, we are so lucky here in Australia mm. because, you know, we've we've really we seem to be coming through COVID nineteen really easily by comparison yeah. to a lot of other countries. Yeah. But all the same, I know a lot of people who have been really um, concerned about how things are going to pay out for them in the, in the future. So, um, you know, my business is all about helping people find that certainty, find, connect with the direction that they are, are really passionate about. And, and often, you know, when we've got so many different sort of worries and concerns mulling around in our minds, we lose track of the main theme that's going to keep us, you know, sort of steering forwards. And, and, and that's where I can come in and I can help people connect with, or reconnect with their driving force and help them establish where they're going to go and what changes they need to make and, you know, give them that certainty because it's got to come within. Um, you know, if we rely too much on the guarantees of other people around us or the guarantees of, um, you know, the government or, or whatever, you, you're sort of placing all the responsibility for the, how your life is happening on other people. On and, external and, forces, yeah. On external forces, exactly. Yeah. So whereas the, the, the reliance, the, the confidence, the certainty that we need for anything must come from within us. Yeah, yeah. So we're getting towards the end here, Nico, but uh, look, are there any shout outs that you wanted to give? Oh, look, um, shout outs to all the people that I have been in, in, in contact with while we've been in isolation. Um, you know, sort of you yourself, um, the other sort of small business networking group that I'm a part of, you know, everybody's been really sort of um, keeping in touch and connecting with each other. And Julie, as you mentioned, mm. um, you know, she and I have got a little bit of a sort of a mastermind going on. Um, so <laughs> there's, uh, there's loads of people who, who've sort of come to the fore to uh, create a reliable, dependable community. And, uh, you know, they're, they're amazing people. Keep doing what you're doing. Excellent. Excellent. Well, guys, that's, um, that's been uh, Nico Davies Cook there. And as I said, uh, all the links to get in touch with Nico, if you've had a few light bulb moments throughout this interview, um, 
get in touch with her and I'll provide those links for you down below. But uh, thanks again for your time today, Nico. You're most welcome, Ben. It's been fun. Far too short, really. I know. Oh, well, this, we, well, we could we could go on forever. I know we've gone for a long time, but um, we we will see each other again soon, whether it's on we a will. Zoom meeting we or will. somewhere else like that. But yeah, in the not too distant future, at least. All right, many thanks, Ben. All no the best. Way. Thanks for your time, Nico. You're welcome. Bye bye.